This episode of Food for Thought is brought to you by the listeners of this podcast, and that means you. Thank you for valuing this podcast by supporting it at joyfulvegan.com slash donate. Welcome to Food for Thought, the podcast all about living compassionately and healthfully and doing it joyfully, deliciously, and sustainably. My name is Colleen Patrick Gaudreau. I am your host. You can learn more about who I am and what I do by visiting my website, joyfulvegan.com. Today's topic is, is it vegan to buy or wear secondhand leather or wool or silk? Welcome, everyone, and hello. I hope you're doing fabulously well. I'm recording this in the sixth week of healing from my fractured ankle. Luckily, I can write podcast episodes without an intact ankle, and so here I am. Just a reminder that the Effective Communication and Advocacy Workshop is coming up. It's all online. You can register for it at joyfulvegan.com. And you can book the remaining spots on our idyllic French countryside Joyful Vegan trip or on our magical Alsace Joyful Vegan trip. They're both around the corner, so do not delay. You can go to joyfulvegantrips.com to see the details for the Paris to Bordeaux trip, which is the one that's in September. We're going to the Loire Valley and the Dordogne Valley. That's in September. And then we are going to the Alsatian region of France. We're going to be also in Germany. We're going to be going to Christmas markets. We're going to be in Switzerland. And that's in December. So details and booking links are at joyfulvegantrips.com. Calm. Let's get started with today's episode. I feel like I often say a common question I get is, but I do get a lot of questions, and I do think this one is in the top 10 for sure. The question usually goes like this How do you feel about wearing secondhand leather or wool or fur or name the animal product? It could be silk cashmere, feathers, even things like pearls or bones or shells come up when people ask me this question. And the question isn't just, do vegans go to thrift stores and buy secondhand leather or or wool or etc. It's also related to whether vegans can and should, and we'll get into those words, can and should, um, do vegans um, wear leather products or animal products from their pre-vegan days? Like, what about that? What about all of the wool or the silk or the leather you have when you become vegan that you bought before you were vegan? What happens with those products? Do vegans, can vegans, should vegans wear those products? Right, because most of us grew up, you know, not just eating animal flesh, but wearing it and other animal derivatives like the wool and the silk and the fur. I'm just going to keep calling them animal products or animal derivatives because we're talking about kind of all of the ways in which we take animal parts (laughs) and wear them. So the question is phrased in a myriad of ways. And you know me, I like my my words, and I do think framing and how we – think about the way we say things is super important. And so the way it's phrased is often, what do you think about vegans wearing secondhand animal products? That's often a question I get directly. Um, Do you wear secondhand leather or animal products is a question I get directly. What do you think about vegans wearing leather shoes or wool sweaters, you know, from their pre-vegan days? That's a question It's phrased that way. Maybe you've asked that question. And then another way it's phrased is, is it vegan to wear secondhand leather or wool or silk animal derivatives? So I want to start with the last one, whether or not it's vegan to do this or that. You will never hear me say that it's vegan or not vegan to do something or other. First of all, the reason I don't couch it that way is because it implies that there's some vegan overlord making decisions about what is vegan and what is not. And there is no vegan overlord. Second, it suggests that the barometer by which we measure our actions is veganism. It's not. Vegan is not my barometer. Compassion is. Third, related to that, I don't like to characterize behavior as vegan or non-vegan because it sounds rigid and ideological and quite unpleasant to live by, to be honest, because it sounds like there are rules that we have to abide by. 
being vegan is not a badge to wear. It's not a goal to attain. It's not an end in itself. It's a means to an end. And the end, to me, (laughs) the goal is to not contribute to violence against animals when we have the power to do so. The goal is not to be vegan. The goal is to live as compassionately as possible and being mindful of our actions and our purchasing decisions so that we're not hurting anybody else. And one of the best ways to do that, one of the kind of the easiest ways to do that is to do it by being vegan. But the question isn't, is it vegan? The question for me is, am I contributing to violence against animals, right? When I, whatever, perform this action, buy this product, support this company, say this phrase, right? The question isn't, is it vegan to say this? Is it vegan to do this? The question is, is it compassionate? Is it kind? Uh, Am I perpetuating kindness or am I perpetuating cruelty, right? It's really that simple for me because that's what it comes down to for me. And as you've heard me say, I don't aspire to be as vegan as I can be. I aspire to be as compassionate as I can be. So with that framework in mind, let's get down to brass tacks and address what I think is the most relatable and real world scenario for most people, which is still having the wool sweaters and the cashmere cardigans and the silk ties and the wool blankets and the shoes or the car seats or the furniture made with leather from your pre-vegan days. And I, I know a lot of vegans grapple with this, especially new vegans. And I know a lot of vegans feel guilty about this, right? This being, oh my gosh, I have all these things that were made with animal products. I didn't even think about it. It's the same kind of guilt and remorse vegans feel when they become vegan. And they're like, how did I not know? And how could I have eaten all of the animal products? How could I have done that? Right? And it's part of the journey. It's part of the journey. So first of all, be gentle with yourself and acknowledge who you were, what you did, what you knew, what you didn't know, right? number one. And I talk about this specifically in my book, The Joyful Vegan, particularly in the chapter about the guilt and remorse we often feel having eaten meat, dairy, and eggs, having purchased leather or name it, wool, whatever, whatever animal product. And we look all around us and we see the couches and the pillows with down or feathers. We see our closets. We see all the leather. We see all the wool. We look at our beds. Maybe there's down. We look at our shoes, there's, again, you know, suede, whatever it is, right? And we see the products of animal violence everywhere. So just know this is part of the journey. And now seeing those things through uh, with fresh eyes and through a new lens, I mean, that's the gift is that we're seeing it for the first time, our eyes are open, and then we're grappling with, oh, God, how did I, how could I have done this? And what do I do now? So just know that it's part of the journey and you're on this journey. Forgive yourself. Forgiving yourself is essential for moving forward. And as I also say in the book, the truth is, as you're able to replace these things, you will if you want to. And we're going to talk about the if you want to part as we continue in this episode. What I found to be the case for me and what I think is the case for a lot of people is that Once I was wide awake, once my eyes were open, once I was aware of the suffering that took place to produce these things, no longer willfully blind, right? You kind of naturally become less comfortable with animal products in your home and on your person. And so what inevitably tends to happen is that you will eliminate them from your life. That's what happened for me, right? Sometimes slowly, sometimes right away. There is no one answer. It is all part of the process. Just as becoming vegan is a process, so is being vegan. And this process and its timing also varies depending on the items, right? So are we talking about a closet full of leather shoes and purses? Are we talking about a car with leather seats? Are we talking about drawers full of wool sweaters and the down comforters and the silk ties and the feather pillows, right? Whatever the inventory, what I have found is that if and as you're able to afford replacing them, you will, and most people do. But it's rare that it happens all at once. It's rare, and I think it's unreasonable. It's rare, and I think it's unreasonable and costly and not really very sustainable, right? If you just take everything and just, I don't know, throw it out. And we're going to talk about all the options we have for what to do with these things. 
But I think it's also very possible that you're not the only one making the decision to replace everything that has an animal product on it. Maybe your car is under a lease and you can't, you know, you can't stop that lease. You can't end the lease without some serious financial repercussions. Or maybe it's under another family member's name. Or maybe another family member loves the leather sofa that you want to get rid of. Or maybe you're a teenager and you don't have the means to buy all new shoes. Uh, your parents are the ones who still pay for things for you and they don't want to replace everything or they can't or they're unwilling to, right? So th the scenarios tend to be varied and they're not just all, you know, one size fits all. So in all of these cases, if there are situations where we're grappling with what to keep, should we wear it? Should we get rid of it? One question I encourage you to ask yourself, right, is how does keeping this couch contribute to animal cruelty right now? How does keeping these shoes, how does keeping these purses, these sweaters, these pillows, whatever it is, contribute to animal cruelty right now? Or flip it around and ask, how does getting rid of this couch help animals? How does getting rid of these purses help animals right now, right? The answer to these questions may help you decide what to do next, or at least enable you to forgive yourself and alleviate any guilt you might be feeling if you decide to keep them, right? And slowly and surely, you will question it, you will feel the feels, and you will make the decisions. And most likely, you're eliminate, you'll eliminate these things from your life. And you'll replace them with non-animal product versions. It really is a bit of an organic process. So be honest with yourself, ask the questions, be gentle with yourself, and move forward, right? So for me personally, now this was a long time ago. It was 24 years ago. But I did slowly get rid of all of the animal products in my closets. I mean, you know, I, mean, I didn't have... I don't know, I didn't have like probably a lot of real leather. I wasn't, you know, <laughs> I wasn't like a, a fashion, a fashionista. And I certainly wasn't someone who cared a lot about, um, you know, or could afford the highest quality everything. And, you know, animal products do cost more than synthetic versions. But I did have leather shoes. I've told the story about a leather skirt I had. We're talking about the 80s, folks. I had a leather skirt. I remember saving up for, and this is back in the 80s, I remember putting it on layaway because I wanted this particular leather skirt from this leather store I went to in the Livingston Mall. Maybe it was the Short Hills Mall. I can't remember. I think it was the Short Hills Mall because I think it was next to a bookstore I used to work at <laughs> in the Short Hills Mall. And so maybe I did go and get some other things, but it was a big deal. It was a big deal to get this leather skirt. I had leather jackets. It was a big deal to get. I remember there was a bomber jacket I had, a brown leather bomber jacket, and I loved it. And I had leather shoes, but I also had like, you know, synthetic shoes as well. I had wool sweaters. I had, I probably had some silk blouses. I do remember a couple silk blouses that I really liked. So I did have these things. And over time, I did give these things away because I just wasn't comfortable wearing them. I wasn't comfortable just having them in my house. I wasn't comfortable having them certainly on my person, right? And I didn't have leather couches or anything like that. And to, to this day, like I don't like sitting on leather couches if I go to a doctor's office or a waiting room, right? Or if I sit in the passenger seat of a car that has leather seats, right? Right. But if there's nowhere else to sit <laughs> and there are no other transportation options, right? I'm going to sit on the couch, right? I'm going to I'm going to ride in a car that has leather seats. I'm just not convinced that not sitting on the leather couch or rejecting that car ride is going to help animals at all, right? What if it's a friend's car? And I and I have had situations where um either it's a friend's car and they're not vegan and you know the vegan shows up, right? Being the vegan in the room and they go, "Oh god, I just realized I have leather seats. I feel so bad. I'm so sorry." Okay. Okay, well, I'm, you know, now I'm mirroring to them what they're realizing is, you know, problematic. People don't usually apologize if it's something that is not a product of violence. So, okay, they're aware and what have you. Should I say to that friend, no, I'm not going to get in your car? I mean, I don't think you could, but I don't really think that's the best approach <laughs> to, for the friendship. Um, but also, how am I helping animals, right? How am I helping? Yeah, m might it feel icky? Yes. I'm usually wearing clothes, so I'm probably not feeling it. I am always wearing clothes, by the way. I'm not just usually <laughs> wearing clothes, but you get the idea. Sure, like, oh, okay, I don't really want to sit on it, but I'm going to do it, right? 
Uh, same thing with the leather, you know, couch or whatever. Like the point is like, it, we're all on this journey. It, there's just, it's not a perfect world. I've had situations where same thing. It was, you know, it was someone who was vegan who had a leather, you know, had leather seats in their car and they're like, oh my God, I can't even believe I got this car. I didn't even think about it. But you know, when the lease is up, I'm going to get a car that doesn't have leather seats, right? That's what this journey is about. I still have a pearl ring that a friend in high school, Livingston High School, gave me. Her name was Amy. I think it was like her grandmother's ring. I don't even remember the details, but it was, it's a pearl ring. And I wear it. I wear it, right? Um, several years ago, I mistakenly bought a sweater that had cashmere in it. I didn't realize it when I bought it, which is crazy because, of course, I look at tags. But I have kept that sweater and I wear that sweater, right? Would I do the same thing if it were, I don't know, I realized it was cow leather? Maybe not. It's, so it's just, it's not always black and white, right? When we were at one of our safari camps in South Africa, I did my makeup and my hair using a mirror that was framed with animal skins. Now, this is never going to happen on a joyful vegan trip. This wasn't part of the joyful vegan trip. This was our own journey. And that was one of the things we scout when we, when we travel is we want to make sure those things are re removed for our travelers. The point is, none of that makes me less vegan. None of it makes me less vegan. Living an examined life and you know, having the intention to do the best we can means learning to tolerate these gray areas that we inevitably encounter. And rest assured, wearing old leather shoes until they wear out, keeping my friend's pearl ring, it doesn't make us less vegan, any of these scenarios, right? It just makes us more human. Imperfect humans in an imperfect world using this thing called veganism to reduce harm, to reduce illness, you know, obviously if you're doing it for health reasons, but it's a pretty fantastic way to reflect our values of compassion and wellness. It's not going to be perfect because life is not an algebra problem to solve. It's a journey of a thousand steps made up of a million mistakes and a trillion opportunities to do better. That's called life. All right. So the next thing to say about that, so I haven't answered the question, should you wear these things? We're going to get into, into that right? I think you're probably getting the idea that I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I am offering a framework and thoughts for how to, how to make the decision yourself, right? So I know that some people's opinions, some vegans' opinions, is that the idea of wearing any kind of animal product, even if it's leather shoes or wool coats from our pre-vegan days, is anathema to them. They would never do it. And like I said, it was anathema to me. I did eventually get rid of everything that was animal derived. But there is a school, except for the ring and the sweater I just mentioned, um, but there's a school of thought among some vegans that wearing animal products of any kind, like just if it's from your, from your pre-vegan days or if it's secondhand, right? Wearing animal products of any kind poorly represents veganism, right? Because it's endorsing or promoting the use of animals, right? Because the people who see our old leather jacket or wool sweater, they don't know that they're secondhand. They don't know that they're from our pre-vegan days. So just by virtue of wearing anything that is an animal product, it's an endorsement of animal products if you wear them at all. So let's unpack some of this. First of all, I can't control the conclusions that people are going to draw by virtue of looking at me, <laughs> right? Knowing I'm vegan, which, you know, in the scenario that is painted by people who hold that opinion, that just by virtue of wearing animal products, you're misrepresenting veganism and you're promoting animal products. Well, I mean, someone just looking at me, they don't know that I'm vegan unless I'm wearing a shirt called vegan that says I'm vegan, whatever. They don't know I'm vegan. So, you know, whatever. Um, but I can't control the conclusions that people are going to draw just by looking at me, right? All I can do is do my best to reflect and communicate and advocate for what it means to live compassionately and healthfully and stay aware that I can't control how that message is going to be received. I can't control how someone behaves. I can't control the choices someone else makes based on how I behave, or based on the choices I make, right? I talked about this in the fat shaming episode I did several years ago, that, you know, even if someone decides that my wearing old or secondhand or synthetic leather, they don't know that 
it's old or synthetic or secondhand leather, what I'm using this as an example. If someone decides like, well, that I'm, that by virtue of me wearing leather, secondhand, old or synthetic, um, is a reason for them to not be vegan. I'm like, what? Like, I, that's not mine. I, I can't control that. If someone's like, oh, so she's wearing leather. So see, it's fine. I'm, I'm going to keep wearing it. It's obviously fine to do that. <laughs> like, like that is not mine. If someone draws that conclusion. If someone is looking for ways to not change, to keep doing what they're doing, to stay willfully blind, then they're going to do it anyway. That's not my responsibility, right? Now, some people do ask and some people do try to catch the vegan they know, right? If they know I'm vegan, we've all been in that situation, especially when we're new. We've all been in that situation where someone knows you're vegan and they say, oh, you're wearing leather shoes. See, you're not vegan, right? Mm-hmm. I know that you're not vegan. I thought you were vegan. We've all been in that situation, right? And at that moment, it's an opportunity to talk about how being vegan is about doing the best we can to not contribute to violence. And that, you know, now that I know I'm going to do better, but like, why would I do nothing because I can't do everything? You know, why would I, why would I do nothing now because of what I didn't know then, right? So that's an opportunity to have that conversation. But when it comes to representing veganism, by trying to be as perfect as we can be, or as consistent even in other people's eyes, like that's impossible. I'm going to be as consistent and authentic as I can be in my eyes. But I can't always, you know, I'm not going to be able to please everybody else and I'm not even going to try. So in those situations where we talk to family members about, you know, if the fact that we're still wearing leather shoes from our pre-vegan days and they want to catch us, it's such a great opportunity to say, listen, like I didn't know and now I know and I won't buy them anymore. And as I can afford to, I will replace these shoes with new ones. But, you know, I'm not going to not be vegan now because I wasn't vegan before. I'm not going to not do the right thing moving forward and I'm not going to be able to undo it. And I think it's a real opportunity to demonstrate to non-vegans, like, it's not about undoing and, you know, self-flagellating and, you know, trying to deny what we, who we were before and what we didn't know. It's such an opportunity because people think about themselves when they see us. We do the same thing. We think about ourselves when, you know, we're encountered, you know, when we encounter someone else who's living away, living in a way or thinking in a certain way or whatever, right? We're always thinking of ourselves. And so us being able to demonstrate, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to move forward. And if you didn't know before, you can know now and now you can do the right thing. It's just an opportunity, right? Whatever that looks like. Now, back to the scenario of if we're wearing any kind of animal product, just by virtue of wearing it, if someone's walking past us on the street, we're endorsing leather. I have to say, I, when it comes to leather, it's a little tricky because we might actually be wearing synthetic leather. And, you know, someone might accuse us of hypocrisy at that moment. They might say, oh, I thought you were vegan. Those are leather shoes. And I can say, no, they're not. They're synthetic, right? <laughs> and then they'll probably say, oh, but synthetic leather is bad for the environment. And that's a different conversation. And we can talk about that later. But there is a bit of, you know, satisfaction. I know when vegans, um, you know, are, you know, presumably caught out for being hypocritical. And then we can say, no, you know, they're not. But the point is... <sighs> Synthetic leather has been around for so long that non-vegans can't even tell the difference such that they could, you know, try to call us out and catch us. So are vegans poorly representing veganism by wearing synthetic leather? Like, should we be so concerned about that and what other people think and what we're representing and what we might be promoting? Shh, if we're wearing, like, should we wear only hemp shoes and cotton purses? Like, I don't, like, wh like where do you draw the line there for those people who feel that in any way wearing leather in any way. So again, this isn't about how I feel. Like I don't like wearing even, um, you know, if it were secondhand leather. I don't like it. I don't want to because I don't, I know, I know like that's the skin of an animal. So personally, I don't, I don't want to. So I don't not wear secondhand leather because of how it is represented to somebody else. I choose not to wear it because I don't like, it on my person. 
But for those who say that vegans shouldn't wear any kind of, you know, again, leather, like if it's secondhand or your or your pre-vegan leather shoes, purse, whatever it is, I think that doesn't hold up because not only can we not control what other people think and that's not my problem, but also what about synthetic leather? Like I get a ton of compliments on my Arceo backpacks, you know, my Arceo backpacks. They're made from synthetic leather and they look like really soft leather, like made from calves. Like they're beautiful and they're different colors and I get so many compliments. Now, does that mean for all the compliments I get, there are a hundred people who don't say anything at all and assume I'm wearing animal skin or, you know, my backpack is made of animal skin? Maybe, but I can't solve for that. I can't control that. Same thing with the synthetic leather boots I wear in the winter time. Am I perpetuating animal cruelty because my boots look like animal leather? I have sweaters that probably look like wool and skirts that I know look like silk. I have a winter coat that looks like it's down filled. Should I put a button on all of these things to make sure that every person who sees my purse or boots reads my button and knows that they're vegan, knows that they're not animal derived? I mean, you can do that but I'm not going to do that. Now, when someone asks me or compliments me on these items, and they often do, I love saying that they're vegan. Of course I do. And I do often have the chance to do this. But there are tons of people who, you know, see me and don't ask, am I tacitly endorsing cow leather by wearing a backpack that isn't made of cow leather, but looks like it, right? The point is the people who say that wearing secondhand leather or wool or is a silent endorsement or a promotion of animal skins, then I would say that you'd have to make the same argument against wearing vegan leather too. More than that, saying something like this, and I've seen this all over the place from vegans, you cannot be vegan. You cannot be vegan and wear any kind of leather secondhand or your own pre-vegan leather because the message you're giving out is that it's okay to kill animals for their skin. So again, I think the strongest argument against that is then I assume you're only wearing, you know, hemp. I don't know. Um, But I don't even know what that means. And that's a phrase that is often, it's often framed that way. You can't be vegan and. You can't be vegan and. What? I don't understand what that means. <laughs> like, I don't even, I don't even know what that means. Does that mean I'm, fi- I'm really, I'm, fi- I'm actually not, like, that whole idea that vegans will say other vegans are not actually vegan. What does that mean? Do, like, you have to give back your vegan membership card? And who does that card get returned to? Like, the person who wrote that opinion? Are they collecting revoked vegan membership cards? I don't, like, the vegan police. Where's the vegan police station? Do I give it back to the vegan overlord? Where are they? What's their address? Do they live on Mount Doom? Like, I don't even know what that means. You see the problem with that? Like, it's, you can't be vegan and. Yes, you can. You have my permission to be vegan and do the best you can. So that's my opinion about that. And by the way, there is no vegan membership card. (laughs) There's no vegan membership card. There probably, I don't know, there might be vegan police living on Mount Doom, but there is no such thing as a vegan membership card. And not only is it just not that clear cut, I just don't think we can make grand sweeping generalizations about every animal product because I think there is a difference. Now, for instance, I do wear synthetic leather, as I said, and I don't feel like I'm poorly representing being vegan, but I wouldn't wear a faux fur coat. I wouldn't wear boots that looked like crocodile skin, right? Even if I wore a pin on my fur coat or button, whatever, right, that says, you know, no, it's fake fur or uh, a a button, I don't know, on my shoes that said this crocodile leather is fake. I'm not going to do that. First of all, I'm not going to do it. But the point I'm making is that I do feel like if I were wearing fake fur, there is an element of I'm promoting fur. Like fake fur is still too much of a statement, whereas synthetic leather has just been around long enough that it's part of the norm. Every non-vegan is buying some kind of vegan leather without them knowing that it's vegan. It's just, you know, it's just synthetic leather. So there are gray areas even within this gray area. And here's another gray area. While I wouldn't wear a faux fur coat, I do have faux fur blankets in like every room in our house because they're 
pretty and luscious and warm and I love them. And here's the rub. I control every person who comes in and out of my house and every one of them knows that the blankets are fake. So I'm not like, you know, endorsing real fur skinned off of an animal, right, in my house. Like they know these blankets are just, you know, they're it's fake fur. But would I wear a fake fur out in public as a coat? No. I wouldn't. Would I wear a real fur coat that I had from my pre-vegan days personally? No. If you want to do that, that's fine, right? If, you know, that's your wish, that's fine. But that's my line. My line is that I'm good with those the fake fur blankets in my house. Wouldn't be okay with, if they were real fur blankets from my pre-vegan days, I could tell you right now I wouldn't be comfortable with it. So fake fur blankets in my house, I'm okay with that fake fur on my person, like if I wore a coat that looked like fur, no, I wouldn't do it. So, you know, it's just sometimes there are our own personal lines that we draw when it comes to things like this. There is no vegan overlord telling us what to do. We just kind of have to make our own decisions for ourselves, period, full stop. So now what to do with all of those pre-vegan animal products? You you have them, you, you know, you have the leather boots, you have the fur coats made from, you know, actual animal fur, animal leather, animal, you know, wool. Um, you don't want to wear them anymore. What do you do with them, right? After we talk about what to do with these products, and we're going to go through all the different scenarios, then I'll talk about, hmm, Is it vegan too? You know, I'm not going to answer that question. But do vegans, what about, how do you feel about vegans intentionally purchasing or wearing secondhand products, like going to a thrift store and actually buying them for different reasons? And we'll talk about that next. So first I want to talk about what do you do with all of these things? What are what are the options you have? Because there's different dilemmas and challenges for each one of them, whether it's selling them or giving them away or throwing them away. So we're going to get to each one of these scenarios and then you can make the decision for yourself. Before we do that, I do want you to know I appreciate your support. This podcast really is supported by you. <laughs> like You can hear me. I'm not advertising anything that I'm selling. So if you want this podcast to continue and you appreciate the time and the energy, I put into these episodes, thank you for making it possible, whether you are an enthusiast and you're contributing $5 a month, if you're a champion and you're contributing $10 a month, if you're a superstar and you're contributing $20 a month, if you're a bestie and you're contributing $30 a month, if you're a hero and you're contributing $50 a month, and thank you, Rachel Henry, who is a new hero. Rachel has been a supporter for many years, but she just recently um, became a hero And she has also volunteered to help me with the website, cleaning up my website. There's just been a lot to do since the new website was built. So shout out to Rachel. Thank you so much, Rachel, for being my hero and for your support. And then, of course, there's other levels, which are my benefactors, David Cabrera and Alexandra Gray. You can join them. You can join my angels, Brooke Boussard, Mikhail Stone, Gina Stryler, Carrie Parker, and Risa Rybakov. You can be a hero along with Rachel and Simon Small and Angelica Lofton and Jennifer Statmiller and Jennifer Watkins, Gerilyn Hilmar, PJ Schuster, Denise Hoskins, Rangini Mohan, Tina Strassheim, Liz D, and now Rachel Henry, as I said, you can join them. Same names you keep hearing every episode, join them, and you will hear your name in this portion of the podcast. You can go to joyfulvegan.com slash donate. You can go right to Patreon. But if you go to joyfulvegan.com, you can see all of the options you have to become a supporter. So thank you so much in advance. Okay, what to do with those animal products that you don't want to wear anymore. So as far as I can see, there are five options. You keep what you have and you use them up. You wear them until they're worn out and they have to be thrown out or replaced, right? You give them away. You can donate them to a nonprofit. You can give them to friends. You can give them to neighbors. You can give them to locals on your neighborhood buy nothing group. You can give them away on free cycle. So give them away. So keep them, wear them out. Give them away. Sell them to a thrift store. Throw them away. They'll go in a landfill or recycle them. So what are arguments for and against each of these? And yes, there are a lot of opinions. So there's <laughs> there's arguments for and against. So you keep what you have, you use them up, you wear them up until they're worn out, and then they have to be thrown out or replaced. Now, some vegans don't want to do this because they're just grossed out wearing animal products, as I described above already. Uh, some will be okay with it. And I'm here to tell you that doesn't make you less vegan. No vegan overlord will come knocking on your door. Well, they 
They might, but you just close the door. So using up what you already have, you're adhering to what I assume are your values of sustainability and use and value. That's what I consider zero waste is, you know, valuing something, using something until it's used up. That's a principle to live by in addition to living vegan. You can live according to both of those values at the same time. You don't have to choose one or the other. So be honest with yourself. If you want to wear those shoes, wear them out and then get rid of them, do it, right? Number two, you give them away to friends or you make a donation, you donate them to a nonprofit, right? Or you give them away to locals. Now, arguments for this approach is number one, someone else is going to make use of them. So someone else is still going to value and use them, right? Someone else who might not be able to afford them to buy new shoes or belts or purses, whatever it is. So you're helping someone else make use of them. Your trash is someone else's treasure. Someone may be very happy to receive what you don't want anymore. So that's, you know, like amazing. Number two, related to that, you're taking responsibility and you're rehoming items instead of just throwing them away. Again, that's the principle behind zero waste. Responsibility, the definition of garbage that I love is any item for which its owner has stopped taking responsibility. So by rehoming these items, you are taking responsibility for them and you're making sure that someone else has them. And I know there's an argument that says, well, you're perpetuating, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Uh, Another argument for giving them away is that you're reducing demand for new animal-based clothing in the marketplace, right? So even though it's leather or wool or silk or whatever you're giving away, someone else will enjoy those things instead of buying them and then creating more demand in the marketplace. So you're reducing demand for animal-based things in the marketplace. When I say donate to a nonprofit, one of those nonprofits could potentially be a shelter. So a shelter for unhoused people or, uh, or you know, who, who needs clothes or blankets, right? Or for unhoused animals who need blankets and things to keep them warm and cushy while they're in, um, while they're in a shelter or foster home. So depending on the item, there are lots of options for where you can donate them to. Now, The arguments against, as I said, is that just by virtue of you giving them to someone else, you're perpetuating the use of animal products um, and they're you're promoting animal products. I you can you can say that I, I think I've already established enough reasons for giving them away (laughs) to someone else. I think I've already spoken to that, but that would be an argument against it. Now, another uh, option is to sell them to a thrift store. All the arguments for this would be everything I've already said, right? You're putting them back in this circulation. Someone's going to buy that instead of buying a new animal-based product. Uh, Another argument for it would be that you can donate the money you make selling the items to a consignment store, to a cause that is working to help change the way we think and treat, think about and treat uh, animals. So you can, you know, you're not going to make that much money selling to a consignment store, but whatever money you do make, you can, you can donate to an animal organization or someone helping animals, right? Now, an argument against selling them to a thrift store is that you're making money off of animal products. Donate the money then. Just donate the money. And you can go to local thrift stores. You can go to online thrift stores. Thread Up is a wonderful... Uh, online, th- basically thrift store that I buy a lot of my clothes at, and it's secondhand everything. And you can see the quality, you can see the pictures, you can see descriptions, you can filter by brand, you can filter by label, that kind of thing, price, color, size, all of it. So I use Thread Up, and I haven't actually purchased anything new in a long time. So check out Thread Up, and that's a place you can also donate, or not just donate, sorry, sell. I guess you could donate, but you can sell your items over on ThreadUp as well. The fourth option, as I said, is throwing items into a landfill. And, you know, if they really are in such a shape that no one else could make use of them, and it would be insulting to, you know, give someone a tattered pair of shoes, there is a point at which we are going to have to throw something away. And that's just inevitable because of the things we buy. And so it's not an argument for, it's just, it's just kind of a necessity at some point, you will probably throw things out. And it's an argument for wearing them out, right? It's an argument for either giving them away for someone else to wear them out until they do have to get thrown into a landfill, or you wearing them out until they have to get thrown in a landfill. One way or the other, I think 
It's better that something gets worn out before getting thrown away. It gets used, right? You're valuing it by using it and then throwing it away than just throwing away something that's in it's in good shape. Now, if they are in good shape, then just um, donate them, what, what, give them away, what have you. But if you're just throwing them away and they're in perfect condition, that's just waste without responsibility. So that would be an argument against just throwing them away depending on the condition of the item. Number five is recycle. Now, recycle doesn't just mean utilizing your cities, your municipalities, waste management systems, recycling service. It also means recycling items back into circulation. And we kind of talked about those options already. But it does also mean using your municipality's waste management's recycling system. And not everything can be turned into something else, right? Not You could put your sneakers in your recycling bin, your leather sneakers or whatever, and, you know, they're not going to get recycled, right? So some things might, depends on your recycling service, and you can find that out. And that's all part of us taking responsibility also for the purchases we've made in the past. If it takes you a little time to do some research, and it takes you a little time to sell items, it takes you time to go to the thrift store and donate them, it takes you time to, you know, put the things up on buy nothing and then give them away, that's part of our responsibility. We, we brought these things into our lives, and now we have to do the right thing to recirculate them, right? Recycle them, if it were. So not everything's going to be recyclable, but there is there is a way to do it. Not the, the first company I think of when I think of a private company that does recycle things that tend to be not recycled or recyclable through our city's recycling service, and that's TerraCycle. And there's probably other companies that do this, but TerraCycle is the first one that comes to mind for me. They if you went to their website, you could see so many things that you can send to them and they actually do recycle properly. And in many cases, they actually turn the recycled goods into something else and then they sell them. So I don't know, I'm thinking of like, you know, plastic. They will take that plastic, recycle them, make a plastic bench, you know, park bench. And then I'm saying park bench, not that you would buy a park bench, but a trunk or, you know, something. You can buy items also off of TerraCycle that were made from recycled items that people sent to TerraCycle. Now, again, there's a cost. Not all the time. Some of the things are, some boxes are free, TerraCycle boxes that you you get from TerraCycle and you put your stuff in that box and you send it to TerraCycle and they do the recycling. Some of them have a cost. Some of them are free. But if there's a cost, again, to me, it's the the cost of being conscious and mindful and responsible and taking responsibility for the things that we may have mindlessly purchased at some point. So those are the options that I can think of. If you have others, I'd be very interested to know. But the point is we have options. And I just hope that helps in terms of, you know, kind of being mindful about the purchase that we purchases we make now and moving forward, but also being mindful when it comes to discarding of the things we don't want anymore in our lives. And this doesn't go, this doesn't apply just only to, you know, animal derived products in our lives. It's anything. We need to be mindful of what we bring into our lives and be responsible. And we also need to be mindful about how we discard the things that we brought into our lives. That to me is what it means to be zero waste is being responsible, taking responsibility for those things. Okay, we talked about what it means to wear any kind of animal product, either from our pre-vegan days or secondhand animal product, and what it means in terms of, you know, tacitly supporting the use of animals. We talked about what to do with these animal-derived items once we do become vegan. Now the big question is, what about buying secondhand leather? Like, intentionally going to a thrift shop in person or online and purchasing items that someone already owned that have animal products on them. What are the considerations for vegans in this scenario? Now, I have not taken a formal survey, so I can't say what percentage of vegans in the world do this, but I do think that most vegans do not actively seek out secondhand animal products. I think the issue, especially for new vegans, is more likely related to what we already talked about, that they have clothing and shoes from their pre-vegan days. Now, and all of my thoughts regarding those scenarios apply here to that question, you know, is it vegan to go purchase secondhand animal products? Should vegans intentionally go purchase um, items with, uh, secondhand items with animal products on them? That is 
you know, everything we've talked about is what you can apply to those questions. But like I said, I haven't taken a formal survey. And of course, vegans are as diverse as the general population. We don't act with a single brain. But I do think, you know, sure, there's probably some vegans who do actively buy secondhand uh, animal derived clothing or shoes or products. And so let's look at what some of those reasons might be. And the reason I'm giving these to you is for us as fellow vegans to be mindful of why someone's doing something, right? Oh, there's such a wonderful, a wonderful quote, thought that David, my husband, reminds me of often, which is we judge ourselves by our intentions but we judge others by their actions. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could judge others by their intentions? Even if we don't know what those intentions are, but do you see what I mean? When, when we do something, we're like, no, 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 that wasn't my intention. I did it for this. But if someone else does it, you're like, how could they do that? <laughs> right? So what about judging people? Let's not judge people, but let's, what about judging people um, by their intentions? And so that's why I'm, providing these potential reasons for why people who are vegan may be wearing or purchasing, buying, it's the same as purchasing, um, secondhand animal products. The first is the environmental considerations, right? And I think this would probably be cited as the first reason that vegan leather alternatives are not always inherently more sustainable or eco-friendly than secondhand leather. The production of synthetic materials like polyurethane and PVC used in many vegan leather products can involve the use of toxic chemicals, contribute to environmental pollution. Now, don't get me wrong. They are still less environmentally damaging than the production of animal leather because of all of the chemicals for tanning. But that's not what we're weighing here. What we're weighing is the environmental cost of a new petroleum-based synthetic leather versus an already used secondhand animal leather. And you can't really argue that there are fewer environmental costs to the latter. I mean, you can't argue that there, there are more. I said that wrong. You can't, you can't argue that there are more environmental costs to the latter, to the secondhand animal leather. There are more environmental costs to the new petroleum-based synthetic leather. Right? So given the fact that buying secondhand leather shoes doesn't trigger an automatic demand in the marketplace, right? Like you like it would if you bought actual animal leather, you could argue that it's more sustainable to buy secondhand leather shoes or belts or whatever than a new synthetic leather product. Now, personally, I have not brought myself, I've not been able to buy or wear animal products, right? Even secondhand. I might change my mind as I continue to deepen my commitment to living as sustainably and zero waste as possible. I might change my mind. At this point, I've only ever purchased synthetic leather. Uh, and when it comes to clothing, like only textiles that are not animal derived. Now I am, like I said, pretty much buying all of my clothes from ThreadUp at this point. I'm also buying clothing from sustainable uh, clothing manufacturers right now. So, so I'm constantly gauging this as well. Would I someday buy, you know, something from ThreadUp shoes that are leather, you know, because they're secondhand? I don't know. I haven't done it and I'm not planning on it, but I don't know. Now, the good news is when we're weighing these, you know, either or, you know, kind of options, the good news is there are more and more companies, more and more products out there focusing on eco-friendly synthetic materials than ever before. And those materials are just going to keep getting better, especially those made from compostable materials, plant materials, cell-based materials, right? And so these days when I'm making purchases, I am seeking out, even though I'm seeking out synthetic and not secondhand animal leather, I am seeking out sustainable, eco-friendly, vegan shoes, vegan products, but eco-friendly, right? I mentioned Arceo earlier. And if you come to France, our, both of our France trips, the French countryside trip and the Alsace trip, they both start in Paris. And Arceo is in Paris. And I could get you, wink, wink, a discount for sure on their backpacks. I love their backpacks so much. And they're a wonderful family-owned company, animal activists, like they're just an incredible family, an incredible people. 
And I love their bags so much. I get more compliments on these backpacks. And I'm someone who prefers backpacks. I don't like purses. I don't like things that are fussy. So you will see me on my trips coming up. I will. I always bring my Arceo backpacks with me as my as my um, as my means of what purse 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 purses. My my per. Anyway, you'll see my Arceo backpack. So if you come on these trips, you can come. To me, we can go to Arceo together. We can go to Arceo in Paris. So that's just one company of many. If you do a search for eco-friendly vegan shoes or you know sustainable vegan leather or sustainable vegan whatever, you're going to find many companies these days doing great work. There's Matt and Nat. They've been around forever. Rothy's. A lot of people know about Rothy's now. Thousand Fell is a company that makes really eco-friendly, environmentally conscious synthetic shoes, leather shoes. Uh, they even have a recycling program where you can send back your old shoes, the ones that you bought from them. Native Keep, Stella McCartney. I mean, just just do a search for eco-friendly vegan shoes. And the good news is you can find many now. So my point being that, yes, you can say that if you were just buying synthetic leather shoes from, I don't know, from just, you know, some generic shoe store, that you know, synthetic leather is still going to be, you know, more environmentally friendly than new animal leather. But if you're weighing that against secondhand animal leather, the secondhand animal leather probably comes out looking better in terms of sustainability and environmental costs. Number two, another reason that someone might buy intentionally buy secondhand leather leather products or uh, other animal products is um, for durability and longevity. The truth is animal leather is actually more long lasting than even new synthetic leather, right? It's not untrue. And that's been cited and it's not untrue, right? So again, synthetic leather is still less environmentally harmful than the production of animal skin leather, but secondhand leather, right, depending on how used it is, if you get a pair of shoes that's only a year old or whatever, could probably potentially last longer than a synthetic leather product even decades, right? Whereas you'd have to buy several pairs of synthetic leather shoes over that same period of time, right? And one of the benefits of animal leather, put it that way, again, we're talking about secondhand, is that you can buff them, you can polish them, you can repair them. And believe me, I have taken my synthetic leather boots to cobblers. And while of course I I, of course, I can get the you know the heels and the soles repaired. I can get repairs done, and I can get it cleaned up. But you can't buff synthetic leather without scratching it. And animal leather, you can. And so that's going to kind of the longevity. It's going to you know it's going to prolong the life of those of those shoes um, because they're really durable and long lasting compared to many vegan leather alternatives. So that's just a reason that that you know someone might cite for being vegan, but preferring secondhand animal leather to synthetic vegan leather, right? The durability and the ability to use them for an extended period of time, reducing the need for frequent replacements, which is actually better environmentally, and it's also better cost-wise. Number three, the limited availability of vegan options. Now, again, the options are growing more and more and more every day, which is so exciting. Um, but depending on the specific item you might be looking for, maybe suitable vegan leather alternatives are unavailable or inaccessible or hard to find. Maybe you're in a play or on a, you know, you're, you're in a film set and you want to wear an authentic costume, right? Or you're wearing a costume for Halloween. Like you could argue that buying a secondhand costume just in general, even if it doesn't have animal products on it, is going to be better than buying something new. And so if it's something that you want, you want it to be authentic and you're looking for, uh, you know, whatever, an authentic version, but getting a secondhand, whatever it is, is, you know, is, is, better than buying something new, or if you really need it, obviously it's better than buying an actual animal derived, you know, shirt, cape, boots, whatever it is that you're looking for, for, for a costume or what have you. So the limited availability of vegan options, maybe that's why someone might buy some, uh, secondhand. Number four is cost considerations. So we already talked about this. Vegan leather alternatives, um, especially those made with sustainable and ethical materials, they can be more expensive than secondhand leather items. I keep saying leather, but you get the idea. If you're on a tight budget, purchasing secondhand is going to be a more affordable option while still aligning with your ethical stance, right? Because you're not directly supporting the, the animal industry. You're not 
creating the loop of supply and demand. That loop is closed. So you're still aligning yourself with your values and you're not supporting the industry, but you're, you know, but another value is that you have to be mindful of cost. Okay, so that's another reason. A fifth reason might be personal preference. You know, the truth is some people just have a particular style. Maybe it's a vintage style that they love and that's who they are and they want to express that. And buying a secondhand wool skirt, you know, allows them to express their aesthetic preferences without, again, supporting the animal industry, but still being vegan, right? So that's another reason. And then finally, another reason uh, that I've heard vegan cite is medical reasons, like literally as we're talking about shoes, podiatry reasons. There are some people who have medical reasons for needing to wear certain shoes that may or may not be available in synthetic versions, or they might not do the trick, right? There are some people who need to wear you know, shoes that are breathable or that are specially made by a podiatrist. And if they, you know, you know, or, or like a certain, a type of shoe that's, you know, that a podiatrist recommends, if the choice is between buying a new animal leather shoe or secondhand, if they could find those shoes secondhand, isn't it better to buy the latter? Isn't it better to buy secondhand, right? So, there are reasons that people, that vegans choose to buy secondhand animal products. Who am I to say that they shouldn't? I personally have not had to do any of those things, except the one scenario where I mentioned I did it by mistake. I bought it by mistake. Um, and I could have returned that sweater, but I didn't. I mean, it was actually months. I couldn't have returned it. I would have had to give it away, right? So the question, how would that be helping animals if I give it away? How would it be hurting them by keeping it. In the end, the answer was it doesn't, it's not affecting anything. Now, again, if it were something where I was like, oh, I don't really like wearing its leather, its fur or whatever, I would, I would not have worn it. I mean, I, I remember we were in South Africa or Botswana and I was looking for a sun hat and, you know, like, you know, kind of more of like a safari hat. And there's lots of wonderful safari hats online that don't have any animal products in them. But like, you know, often these cute hats have like a leather strap around it, right? Sometimes they're made from wool too. Felt is usually wool. And so I, I, I didn't buy one online. I was looking while we were on the ground. And so every time we would go somewhere and they would have these hats, because most places when you're in South Africa or Botswana, because they know people are going on safari or looking for these hats, I would find these hats and I would look at them. There were some that had just a strap, just a little strap of leather, you know, the little band of leather, of animal leather. And I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't buy it, right? Um, so you know, you know, if we're, we're, you know, okay, if it were secondhand, would I have bought it? Probably not, right? So I haven't had to be in any of these situations, but, but maybe I will be. We judge ourselves by our intentions. We judge others by their actions. Well, I, other people have different reasons for doing things, and it's not, it's not my say. And so I just want to say that you will not have your vegan membership card revoked by me, but just also be kind to yourself and I mean, don't be so harsh. Don't be so, don't judge yourself. And again, there's no such thing as a vegan membership card. The point I'm trying to make is that it's not cut and dry. It's not black and white. It's not that you're a bad vegan or a good vegan if you do one thing over another. I know what I can do and I know what I want to do, but that doesn't mean everyone else can or wants to do the same. Someone wrote to me recently asking about a dilemma, I know she's listening to this, related to this topic. Uh, she bought a sweater whose buttons were made of shells, and she struggled with whether or not to keep it, kind of similar to the to the sweater that I realized was, you know, partially made from wool. And, you know, for me, months had gone by. For her, I think it was kind of a recent purchase. And she really struggled. And she reached out to me to ask what to do. And one, of course, I can't tell her what to do. But one of the things I had to tell her was not only to be gentle and compassionate with herself, but also to give herself some credit for even caring enough to ask the question. Like, yeah, there's no denying that life would be a whole lot easier if we just didn't care. Most people don't grapple with whether or not it's ethical to have a sweater whose buttons were made from shells. 
but we do care. We do want to do the right thing. How lovely is that? And yes, wouldn't it be wonderful if everything were just simple and clear and black and white? Wouldn't it be great if I could just say, this is the right answer or that's the right answer? For some things, it's clear. But some things are gray and some things are up to each individual. And I think secondhand animal-derived clothing products is one of those issues. But what I can say is just do the best you can. Be honest with yourself. Be gentle with yourself. And be clear about your intentions. For me, my intention is to do the best I can to not contribute to violence against animals, to live as compassionately and joyfully and mindfully as I can, and to be as consistent in my manifestation of my values as possible, but not expect perfection in myself and not expect perfection in anyone else. I don't aspire to be as vegan as I can be. I aspire to be as compassionate and thoughtful and mindful and conscious as I can be. And that's my hope for you as well. For the animals, this is Colleen Patrick Goudreau. Thanks for listening. 